What is the best diet to follow? So if you guys watch the Nutrition 101 video, you guys will understand exactly what your maintenance calories are and then the macro breakdown that you're gonna be using to hit your ultimate goal, which is either to maintain, cut, or bowl. But then once you get those numbers and you start to track your food, you start to ask these different kinds of questions like, should I maybe do some intermittent fasting? Should I do keto? Should I do paleo? Should I do carnivore? Should I do vegan? Should I do vegetarian? There's a whole bunch of different types of nutrition, you know, regimens that people do. But at the end of the day, you still have calories to hit. So for example, if we have 2000 calories daily as our goal and we decide to do carnivore, for example, we still need to understand that just because because we're doing carnivore doesn't mean that we're not going to necessarily overeat because a lot of people, they might choose to do carnivore because they heard that their friend lost a lot of weight doing carnivore. But then at the end of the day, it's like, well, maybe this person chose very, very lean cuts of meat and it was really easy for them to eat less calories than their maintenance calories, which helped them be in a deficit without really trying. However, there could be someone else who does carnivore and all they eat is like pork belly and beef brisket and stuff that has a very, very high fat content, right? And but still carnivore but very, very different food items that are giving you very, very different calorie intake. So just because you're doing carnivore, for example, absolutely does not mean that you're gonna have a greater outcome than someone who is eating literally anything that they want at any given time. So now we can take this exact same strategy and put this on every single one of these. So let's go to fasting, for example. If I'm doing intermittent fasting and I have 2000 calories to eat for the day and I don't eat from the time I wake up, let's say it's 6 a.m., but then I eat at 2 p.m., I have a huge window of no eating, but then at 2 p.m. comes and I have a meal that is like two, three times what I would normally eat and I catch up to those 2000 calories relatively quickly, it still doesn't matter. Because from when I woke up to when I went to bed, I still probably consumed my 2000 calories, which would make sure that I'm just maintaining my body weight. So as you can see, intermittent fasting is definitely not helping you lose weight unless you eat your normal meal that you would normally eat when you don't do fasting. And now you've cut out, let's just say breakfast and maybe a snack, or maybe it's just breakfast. So if you have the discipline that's needed, <laughs> to be able to cut out that time window and then eat normally, this might work for you. But if you're somebody who is going to overeat because you didn't eat for a while previously, then this is not going to work for you. And I would argue eight out of 10 people who do fasting, it actually doesn't really work for them. Now, another way that you might wanna think about this is potentially you know, looking in the keto or looking in the paleo. What I like about these are these ones do kind of limit a significant amount of food groups. So when we do keto, we're looking at very, very high fat, content foods. So because they're high in fat, it's very, very easy for you to go over on your calories. <laughs> So keto for most people, like I would say nine out of 10 people who do keto don't necessarily wind up having the best results, mainly because if you guys watch Nutrition 101, you're gonna be getting nine calories per gram when you're eating fats and you only get four for carbs and protein. So when you're having a diet that is majority fat, very, very easy to go over on your calories. However, also because it is majority fat and you wind up having a very high fat content in your diet, sometimes people do feel more satiation from that. And I would say, it really comes down to very specific individuals. Some people who do keto, they might just genuinely like it because the foods that they like to consume on a daily basis just happen to be higher fat content and that makes them happy, right? So like I would say, for example, you would know if you were gonna do good on keto by this one question. Do you like eggs and bacon in the morning? Or does the sound of like a bowl of cereal or a bowl of oatmeal, something like that sound better to you? Because the oatmeal and the cereal is higher in carbohydrates, whereas the bacon and the eggs, and I'm talking about full eggs, is gonna have considerably more fat and none of that is gonna have any carbohydrates in it. So if that's something that sounds good to you and you could eat like that all day and you don't necessarily like carbohydrates, then keto might be good for you. But regardless of any of these that we do, it doesn't matter which one we do, we are still gonna to have to be cognizant of how many calories we're consuming on a daily basis. And I'm gonna break a little bit more down on this in a second. So vegan and vegetarian, I wanted to hit real quick. So basically you're limiting the kinds of foods that you can eat. You're taking out a lot of meat products. Sometimes you're taking out like animal products on any level. for on the vegan side. And because you're limiting your foods, it might potentially help you get to your ultimate goal because you're limiting different kinds of foods that might that you might be normally overeating on. So by taking those out, it might help you, but you're also limiting protein on both of these. And when you limit your protein, you limit your body's ability to build muscle mass. So as you start to cut calories, if you can keep your calories low, a lot of people who do vegan and a lot of people who do vegetarian, they wind up overeating on like, you know, like vegan sweets. <laughs> like I'm sure we've all seen those in the grocery store. Like uh, these, these tend to be super, super high in carbohydrates 
carbohydrates, low in protein, potentially high in fat. They're really like the vegan and vegetarian foods out there, really not the best combo typically for people who want to put muscle on, mainly because they are low in protein and high in the carbs and fats and the kinds of carbs and fats that make you want to overeat. Like it makes you want to eat more. So not saying anything bad about them. It's just that if you are going to choose these routes, you are going to have to supplement with protein. You're going to have to have some sort of a protein supplement to make sure you're getting relatively close to your body weight and protein each day. But again, this does not mean necessarily that you are going to be able to ultimately hit your goal. And then lastly, I want to hit paleo. So fruits, vegetables, meats, nuts. Because you're eating, you know, four main food groups, it does limit a lot of foods. And because you're limiting a lot of foods, you might be limiting the foods that you typically overeat on. Let's just call it bread. Let's call it rice, right? There's a couple different things out there that you might typically be overeating on. And when you switch to a different kind of diet where you're doing just fruits, vegetables, meats, and nuts, you might find yourself easily being able to eat less and feel more full. All right. So at the end of the day, guys, all of this kind of just like a strategy to help you potentially get to your goal. But at the very end of the day, everyone has two options at the end of the day. You either, I put it here as best practice, you either limit your intake. So no matter what diet you choose to follow, let's just say you decide to just eat everything. Like I'm just going to eat everything. No matter what, I'm going to eat it. doesn't matter what it is. I'm not going to limit myself to anything. When you do that, it's harder to, you know, be in a calorie deficit and lose body fat. If you're trying to gain muscle mass, eating everything is usually pretty great. <laughs> If you're trying to gain muscle mass, then like pretty much any of these diets will work pretty good for you. But when you're trying to limit calories so you can lose body fat and you're having every food that you, you're not limiting any foods at all. You have to just limit the amount, right? So typically you're gonna wanna eat more of something. So you're gonna have to cut it in half. Let's say you go out to dinner, what you would normally order, cut it in half. Like everything that you're doing, you're probably gonna have to cut it in half if you wanna see goals and you don't wanna measure, right? So I'm talking about people who don't wanna inconvenience themselves by measuring. So the majority of people, they wanna follow something without trying, you know, relatively too hard. So if you're not trying too hard and you want, you don't wanna change anything. You just have to eat less. And how you do that is completely up to you. Maybe you take a meal out of the day from your daily routine, maybe just dinner by itself, you're cutting in half, but you have to limit something somewhere. Option two is limiting the foods. I put this up here for a few different ones, but once you limit your foods for a lot of people, this works extremely well. For me personally, I'm a huge fan of limiting my foods. I love fruits, vegetables, and meats. I take out the nuts because nuts for me, not the best. If I start having a few of those, I'll have way too many. I'll overeat on calories like really, really quick. Quickly. So for me personally, I like kind of a mixture of like the paleo and the carnivore style. For me, it works extremely well. Um, and when I am extremely hungry on certain days, I will just have a ton of fruit and I'll try to have the majority of my fruit in like berries, so like raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. You can eat a ton of those and you get very, very low calorie intake. So you're eating a ton of food and getting very, very full with very low calories. So for me, that works extremely well. So again, best practice for most people, if your goal is to lose body fat, you have to limit the intake somehow, eat less. Or or limit the kinds of foods. If you can limit the kinds of foods and that by itself works, for the majority of people, if you're only eating fruits, vegetables, and meat, just those three, like I'm talking about, it's pretty easy to not overeat. It's really, really easy to not overeat. But let me specify one thing. Fruits, vegetables, and meat, lean meat. <laughs> if you have fatty meat, it's very easy to overeat. So lean meats, fruits, and vegetables. If you do that, it's extremely easy to hit your goals in terms of weight loss or dropping body fat or just overall being lighter. Now, eventually, you guys are gonna have times in your diet where you wanna be a little bit more flexible, whether you're following one of these or you're just eating everything under the sun. Doesn't matter, right? So here's what I came up with that I think works extremely well for all the clients that I coach on a one-on-one -on -one basis is I tell them to think of their calories in a weekly basis. So instead of, I have 2,000 calories to eat every day and then tomorrow comes, you have 2,500 and you're like, oh no, like I, everything is ruined. Like I'm, I ruined it, right? It's like, no, you didn't really ruin it because our body doesn't change from day to day. It usually changes from week to week, month to month, and so on and so forth. So if you think about your daily calories in a weekly format, 14,000 calories a week, it makes it extremely easy for you to not feel too stressed out on the day that you go 2,500 and then maybe 1,800 and then maybe you go 3,000, but then maybe the next day is 1,500. You can always make up for it. It's not really that big of a deal. So I try to tell everybody just to kind of keep your stress levels low so you feel really good about what you're doing and you know, let's maybe you want to go out with your friends or whatever go whatever is going on in your life just think about the fact that if you go over you go under whatever it is 14,000 calories a week always think about your calories on a weekly basis I think that is a huge game changer for a lot of people because a lot of people you know they have big goals and they're hard on themselves you don't want to be too hard on yourself you want to be like man you know I messed up today not a big deal make up for it tomorrow let's just say you go over by a thousand let's say you do three thousand I definitely don't want to eat a thousand calories tomorrow that sounds awful <laughs> 
So you, you still have the entire week to make up for it, right? You can just eat like 200 calories less for the next five days. Totally good, right? It's very, very easy for you guys to you know make this stuff work. So again, doesn't matter what you follow, guys. Does not matter. These are all just like strategies to help people. One of these, just because you eat a certain amount of food groups, just because you're taking food other food groups out, does not mean you are going to have a better journey. It does not mean you're gonna lose more weight than someone else. It does not mean that you're gonna build more muscle than someone else. The, the kinds of foods that you eat is irrelevant. You just have to make sure you're getting enough protein in and you're hitting your calorie numbers. So at the end of the day, the number on the scale is completely surrounded by how many calories did I eat today and how much protein did I eat today is second in terms of you building muscle mass and preserving muscle mass if your goal is to maintain or cut. Number one, always how many calories did I consume today? Not I did paleo, I did keto, I did fasting, I did carnivore, and I should get to these goals. No one should get anything unless they know exactly how many calories they're eating each and every day and each and every week. So guys, I hope that helps you guys out. What is the best diet to follow? The best diet to follow is the best one that you can stick to. And I wanted to add one last thing here. It takes 3,500 calories for you to gain one pound, right? So you need to go over this 14,000 you need to eat 17,500 to gain one pound throughout this week. So if you go over by 500 calories, seven days in a row, you will gain an extra pound, whether you are on any one of these diets. 3,500 calories is 3,500 calories. So your goal is to not be consistently over, over and over and over again, day after day after day. So again, this 3,500 calories does not care what you are following, right? And again, the best diet for you is the best one that you can follow. Make sure you're sticking to your daily calorie intake. If your goal is to cut body fat, it's gonna be lower than that. If your goal is to gain, it's gonna be higher than that. Again, this is just an example for the day. Best practice, limit the intake, limit the foods, and time is negotiable because fasting does not work for everybody, but it can work for some. I hope this helps a lot of you guys out and see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. And if you are somebody who likes to get results in the gym, and I think a lot of you guys are, you have to start incorporating better nutrition into your training regimen because this stuff right here will 5, 10X results that you guys are getting in the gym. Just training without the nutrition part, definitely not a good idea. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, share this video with a friend. And if you're not already part of the Chalk Performance Training community, I would absolutely love to have you guys be part of the Chalk Performance Training community. Go to chalkformance training.com sign up for your free trial and I'll see you guys in the next video.